Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Sylvia and it's Kanisha and we are here another week for another video. If you have not already, please like, share, and subscribe. One, two, three. Because we want you to stay up to date with what we have going on. And if you tune in and if you stay with us and even if you go back, look at that list. It's plenty of videos. Check them out. Like I feel like something in there. It's going to be a help to you. Mm -hmm. That's what this is for. <laughs> so stay tuned and hear about today's topic. So I uh, never thought that we would live to see a global pandemic. thought that was just something in my high school U.S. history books. But here we are. And um, on top of that, it seems like things are just compounding, like one thing after another after another. So last year, it kind of made me, with the pandemic and racial tension and the elections, made you question, like, human dignity. <laughs> I'm still questioning. <laughs> what, people, what is going on in people's <laughs> minds? <laughs> still questioning. What is wrong Lord, what is wrong with us? <laughs> Every time you turn on the TV, it was like, oh, you look in your phone, your Facebook page. Um, it's coming from all directions. You had to like, yeah, unplug. Yes. <laughs> Just to get a moment of sanity and peace. Yeah. And I, I you know, it, it, it really, you can see how it was weighing on people. Um, people were edgy, they were cranky. It became like clapback culture times 10. Um, every time somebody said something to you, it was just right, right. It was much. And even though we were on here, you know, we were still doing the topics and talking, um, you know, off camera, we would have discussions about things that were going on because we felt it. Mm -hmm. um, any, and I'm sure you did too. Yes. Anytime you exist in the body of Christ and you are seeking after God, when you see the negativity and the hatred in the world, it grieves you. Yes. And so, you know, I went to God and I was like, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> it's a mess, Lord. It's a mess. <laughs> it, it was heartbreaking. It really was. Um, and I, I just I was like, I don't, how am I supposed to feel? Um, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to watch this? Do I need to engage? <laughs> Should I? <laughs> right. What, 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 what? Um, and so as I'm praying and I'm pouring out my heart and I'm like, help me Lord, what is going on? Touch your, your world, your people. He says, am I my brother's keeper? And I was like, oh Lord. <laughs> Cain told us all the way back then that we didn't have no love for each other mm -mm. and i learned the story um a little bit differently uh which is probably why you should read your bible <laughs> <laughs> because uh, the focus at the time when people would teach it to me is on the evil and the wickedness of cain mm -hmm. and you have which is true um but you have this image that evil and negativity and bad has a certain and that's how we are today. Uh, we look at people and we determine whether or not they're good or bad based on this image that we have of good and evil. Um, when you read the word and you see what the issue was, you have Cain who's born first and then you have Abel who comes after and they're both making their offering to God and there is no real difference explained between the two besides their offering. And so it isn't about what was on the outside of Cain. It is about his actions that result from what's inside him. Mm -hmm. And even then, we don't really recognize it until God gives the warning. And that was one of the uh, positive things in the story. <laughs> Has, think about how we think mm -hmm. when something happens to us. And somebody asks you, well, why are you upset? <laughs> why? Do I really need to explain why? <laughs> yes. And that's that's what we saw a lot of in the world mm -hmm. all day long. People raging about why they were angry, why their demeanor had changed, why their countenance had fallen. And it was all the time. 
And now in the Bible, you don't hear a response from Cain. But you hear the warning that God gives. And that's why um, I think he led me in that direction. And he says, if you do well, you'll prosper. Mm -hmm. We don't like to be told that we have a responsibility. <laughs> we want you to do what you're supposed to do. We don't, we don't like to be told we have a responsibility. You got a dog in this fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he warns him and says that sin is, uh, in essence, waiting to pounce on you. So you're upset. There's something waiting to prey on the opportunity that that vulnerability presents. Yeah. You're gonna have an opportunity to express that anger that is within you, mm -hmm. and if you don't be careful, mm -hmm. that anger that is in you will be the death of you if you don't convey it over the right way. Mm -hmm. God gives space. Now, God asked him, you know. What you mad for? Mm -hmm. And you know, we didn't get the answer, but God gives us space and opportunity to get right what is uh -huh. wrong. You know, just because you say don't mean you can't be upset about stuff. You get upset, but it's how you deal with that and what you are upset about. Yeah. The Lord gives us an opportunity. And He told him right then, I look, you're doing wrong sins at the door now. <laughs> and <laughs> us in our. Our, and I want you to understand that I'm talking about us current time. I'm not talking about Cain. I can't really tell you what his mind was other than what the Bible reveals. But what the Lord helped me see is that us in our current state, we are arrogant. <laughs> and someone will warn you, honey, you, you walk in a dangerous path. Now, you think you're okay. You're justified in your rage. You're justified in your um, desire for retribution. Um but you're, you're walking a dangerous slope because there's something that you're not aware of that's waiting to take advantage of that. And like she said, sin is waiting to pounce on you and take possession of this anger that's in you. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take you a lot further than you thought you was going to go. And so as I was studying it um, in the book of James, it said, I like James, by the way. He, he don't say much, book. but he get right to it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it really is a good book three. It's not long, mm -mm. but it's very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Relevant? It's relevant. It is. He says, we're not tempted by God, but we are tempted when we're drawn away by our, our lusts. And I was like, well, what do you mean lust? Because we think um, sex. But that lust is a strong desire. Oftentimes it's um, for something that you shouldn't have. And so we have something that we desire that may not necessarily be a bad thing, but it isn't for us in that way or it isn't for us right now. Mm -hmm. And we're drawn, that need to possess that thing pushes us. And when that comes, here comes sin. It's like, oh, getting on this train. Right. <laughs> Because they'll do anything right, to get what they want because they want it bad enough. And all of a sudden, what would not be okay to you is now okay. So if I want to be respected and I want to be recognized, maybe I wouldn't talk crazy to Kenesha. But, but because I'm high and mighty now and I'm trying to bring up my status, I'm, I'm a dog cut every time I get. Or maybe I needed money, right? And I'm not a thief, but I need money, so I'm going to take it. I'm a thief today. <laughs> but you wasn't before. Wasn't before. But now you are. And speaking to what is the thing that you wouldn't have done before mm -hmm. that was almost appalling. Mm -hmm. Now is appealing. Yes. Because <laughs> sin has justified it. To you. And, so that, and that's what you saw all in the news last year is people who were behaving in ways that we thought were appalling, but they could not, they couldn't control it. <laughs> they could, couldn't rein it in. <laughs> You know, every, and every time they saw something else or they felt provoked, they went out and lashed out again. And you had people fighting people because they don't have a mask on or fighting people because they do have a mask on. <laughs> you know, or, yeah, it was just whatever it was that you thought a person would never think to do, they was willing to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens when sin sees that lust in you. It takes hold. It's like, we're going to ride this till the wheels fall off. <laughs> and it's going to make sure the wheels fall off. All the way off. And so going back to Cain, 
God was warning him about sin. Now, the Lord knew about sin in the beginning. We didn't find out that <laughs> bit till later on with James. <laughs> but he knew about sin in the beginning. And he warns him that it wants to, it's, it's sin's desire is contrary to what's right for you. Mm-hmm. You got to rule over that. And sin is anything, mm-hmm. anything that is against God. Yes. And I had to look that up. It's that offense. We think of sin as this list and that list and that list and these five things and these two things over here and what you got on and what they talking about. Sin is the offense against God. Keeping sin as a list makes it easier to deal with too. Because mm-hmm. uh, I can say, well, well, I don't do this and I don't do that and I don't do this and I don't do that. Mm-hmm. But the scripture also tells us that if you know to do right and you do wrong... That's sin. Mm-hmm. And speaking of the list and how it makes it simple for us, I think that's why, you know, God wanted me to look at that because we don't identify up front what was wrong with Cain. Mm-hmm. Because what we would have done is looked at that thing and said, well, well, I'm not like that. Mm-hmm. But what God is telling us is, yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. <laughs> because even though he had that warning, and you know it's really nice of the Lord to tap him on the shoulder and try to talk to him about it. <laughs> Warning before destruction. <laughs> he goes to talk to his brother and rises up against him and kills him. And see how quickly that escalated. We talking. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a whole lot of progression and just a little bit of, a little bit of time. One verse. One <laughs> verse. We talk. We rise. He's dead. <laughs> and that was it. And. Now you understand a little bit about what sin is and what it does, but it is not necessarily the killing. It was what was in him that justified him rising up against his brother and resulted in his death. It's what was in him from the moment God asked him, why are you upset? Yes. (laughs) It was that right there. God got him at the beginning. Mm Mm-hmm. Because the answer to that question isn't, I'm upset because you did not show respect to my offering. I'm upset because I'm hard-hearted and I'm angry and unwilling to accept your choice. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are as people. We are very hard-hearted. We ain't trying to take nothing. Mm -hmm. We ain't turning no cheeks. Mm -hmm. We ain't forgiving. You hit me, I'ma hit you. Back. We not. I, I know Jesus says seven times seventy, but you don't get one over here, right? <laughs> okay. Seven times zero. <laughs> That's what you get. You know, we are. We don't look at a situation and say, "God allowed this," because we say, "No, I ain't taking that." Be, you know, um, I talked about how I had to have surgery, and I don't know which video is going to go first. So you might not know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so just watch <laughs> stay tuned <laughs> so when we face um, a challenge or an adversity or something against us you know our impulse is to fight and resist against it but what if what if it's for your making right what if I deal with this and I work through it and I get better mm-hmm. and I make things better around me that wasn't an option with Cain it didn't go down the way he wanted it we got a <laughs> We have got so much clap back and attitude and get wit and set you straight and whatever. And what the Lord is saying in this is that you think you just run in your mouth, but you're going to run your feet and your fist and whatever else you got. As soon as that sin takes root in whatever's in you, it will run you all the way over the cliff. And you hear people say it all the time. I don't know what came over me. Mm-hmm. And so he asked where his brother is, and he's like, I don't know. Am I his keeper? (laughs) And the truth is, you know exactly where you left him. (laughs) You know, because you left him. And the answer that he gave wasn't um, as, you know, it's the I don't care response. Like, I'm not worried about it. And the whole demeanor behind it. Yes. We and when we treat, you know, when we ask 
you know, about people or when we see what's going on in the world, the Lord is asking us, are we our brother's keepers? And they're not, and you know, Cain and Abel were born to the same parents, but we are all descendants of Adam and Eve. And they, we are each other's brothers and sisters, especially those of us who are in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And because we have been um, brought into this family, that is my brother and that is my sister. And what the Lord is asking us is, do you know how they're doing? Do you know if they're okay? Do you know what's happening with them? And what we're saying is, I ain't worried about it. Mm -hmm. Like, have you done right by them? Have you done right by them? Do you know that you've hurt this person? Um, and our response all the time is, I'm not worried. Not yes or no, Lord, I did this. No, I don't even care. And so when we see people on online and on the news and in the streets, and they're saying any and everything to any and everybody, what they're saying, their answer all the time is, no, I don't care. For us, it's a perfect answer because we have to remember that and how we are dealing with each other, um, especially under these trying times where we are all feeling pinched and yes. stretched and respected or disrespected. Or it's, it, we on edge. We are on edge. It's like you waiting for an opportunity mm -hmm. to let out something. We're so quick to look at everybody else. And what God was telling me is that we need to look at ourselves. And if we change our hearts, this all could be different. So, um, am I my brother's keeper? A lot of us are familiar with that. It's the infamous response Cain gives to the Lord when he asked him where his brother Abel was. Now, hold on, wait, because people know that from somewhere else, too. What movie is that? New Jack City. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, yes I, I am. <laughs> I knew it too. That's probably where y'all know it from. Y'all ain't know it, okay? 